Dear student, in this video, I am going to talk about the stereochemistry of cyclohexane ring. Now, in previous year, you already discussed about the stereochemistry of cyclohexane. In that, you already discussed which conformers exist for the cyclohexane ring. After that, that is chair board, half chair, skew board, all these conformers. Among that, the chair conformer is the most stable conformer that you already studied in the last year. The next one is a disubstituted cyclohexane ring, that is 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane, 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane, and 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexane. And the geometry of these two conformer, that is the uh, cis conformer or trans conformer. So these things we already discussed in last year. Now in this video, I'm going to share with you conformations of polysubstituted cyclohexane. So that is the continuation of the previous year's topic, the conformations of disubstituted cyclohexane. Now from this, we are going to start with the conformations of polysubstituted cyclohexanes. Now in this, we have to discuss the different Compounds, the first compound that we have to discuss is 135 cyclohexane. The second one is 1135-tetramethyl cyclohexane. Then menthol, that is 2-isopropyl 5-methyl cyclohexanols. 1-phenyl 2-amino cyclohexanol. And this 1-2-4-5-tetramethyl cyclohexane. The next one is hexachlorocyclohexane, and the last one is inositols. So these seven compounds we have to discuss under the heading of the conformations of polysubstituted cyclohexane. Now in this video, I'm going to share with you only the first point that is the first compound 1,3,5-trimethyl cyclohexane. So let us start with the 1,3,5-trimethyl cyclohexane. So the first, whenever the compound is given, name of the compound is 1,3,5-trimethyl cyclohexane, what you do, you draw the planar ring first of all. So write down the six-membered ring in a planar conformation, and then you number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So after giving the number, then you select where is the substituent and the substituent, which substituent is there. So at one, three, and five position, one position, three position, and five position, the methyl group is there. So with respect to that, there are again two geometries we can have. That is the first one is the cis geometry in which all the methyl groups, either they are wedged or the other option, they can be a dotted. So here I'm showing on the year a wedged one. That is the all methyl groups are facing in upper direction that is beta oriented. The other possibility is all the methyl groups can be downward or alpha bond. So this is the cis where the stereochemistry of all the methyl group is same. Now the trans geometry in this case, one of the methyl stereochemistry is different when we compare with the remaining two methyl group. So this methyl group is facing in upper direction that is beta oriented. C1, CH3, while C3 and C5, CH3, their orientation is different. They are facing in downward direction that is alpha oriented. So this geometry is trans, while this one is a cis. The same thing, another possibility for this is exactly opposite, that this can be alpha, C1, CH3 can be alpha, and C3 and C5, CH3 beta, that is facing in upper direction. So that are the other another possibilities over here. Now let us we draw this in a chair structure. Let us first of all we we'll start with the cis one. So cis, whatever the compound we have shown in the previous planar structure, the same I had drawn a chair structure. Then once you draw the chair conformer, then you number it starting from this carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, and after that in previous planar structure, you can see in previous planar structure, all the methyl groups are facing in upper direction. So 
look at here that C1 CH3 upper direction is axial, C3 CH3 again upper direction is axial, and C5 CH3 upper direction is axial. So the name of the conformer is AAA, and you know that this is highly unstable structure. The reason behind is there are a lot of steric interaction. So this ring flips into the another structure, or we can say another conformer. So ring flipping takes place. That means number one carbon is going in a downward direction and number four carbon is going in an upward direction. So it gives this structure. So here, what are the changes after flipping? After flipping, the axial group always changes to equatorial, but the beta remains beta. So that you always remember, due to flipping, the orientation never changes. That is, alpha remains alpha, while beta remains beta. So that you always keep it in mind, due to flipping, the orientation never changes. What changes? The axial changes to equatorial and equatorial changes to axial. So only the bond is going to change, that is axial changes to equatorial or equatorial changes to axial, but the orientation of the bond, orientation means if the bond is facing in upper direction, it, after flipping, that remains in upper direction only. If the bond is facing in downward direction, that means after flipping, the bond remains in downward direction. So, axial, 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 it changes to equatorial, equatorial, equatorial. But look at this. This is the beta bond that is facing in the upper direction. So, in all the case, you can see the bonds are facing in upper direction. So, the beta remains beta. Now, as you know, axial structure is axial conformer is highly unstable due to presence of non bonded steric interaction. Therefore, EEE -E -E conformer is more stable as compared to EA -E conformer. So, now find out the how many between Gauch interactions are there for more stable structure that is EEE -E -E structure. So, in EEE -E -E structure, as you know, in case of a disubstituted cyclohexane, if one three relation is there, now this is an example of a one three relation. So in one three relation, in one three relation, how many different types of interactions are there? In one three relation, either you have a AA interaction, you have a AE interaction, or you can have a EE interaction. So in case of a 1 3 relation that all interactions are zero, only you have a 1 3 AA interaction. So you can see here this CH3 group and this CH3 group they are 1 3 related and at the same time they are equatorial equatorial. So equatorial equatorial means energy is zero. Same thing here, these two methyl groups are uh, in a equatorial equatorial manner therefore this energy is zero hence it is mentioned over here there is no pit and gauch interaction therefore the delta h of this uh, this conformer is zero the this is the stable conformer this is the stable conformer so you can see here this is the a three-dimensional structure of the EEE -E -E conformer. So, you can see here there is a, all these methyl groups. So, these methyl groups, this methyl group is equatorial, this methyl group is equatorial, this one is also equatorial. So, this is the three-dimensional picture of this. EEE135 trimethyl cyclohexane. Now let us start with the trans one. Now this is the trans molecule. Now in case of a trans molecule, if you go in a planar structure, 
that one methyl group is beta while the remaining two methyl groups are alpha. So first your duty is to draw this in a chair confirmer. Draw the chair first of all, then number it, one, two, three, four, five, six. At number one, the bond is up. So up bond is what? Uh, it is called as a, now in this case, it is a axial bond. Now number three and number four, for you that bonds are going in a downward direction, therefore these bonds are equatorial, equatorial. So the name of this conformer is one methyl group is axial, while the remaining two methyl groups are equatorial, equatorial, so it is axial, equatorial, equatorial group. Now you can see for one axial substituent, how many butane gauge interactions are there? There are two butane gauge interactions, so this methyl group causing an interaction with the C3 axial proton and the same here, this is also number three with respect to this C1 carbon. So C5 hydrogen also, again, axial hydrogen causing an interaction with this methyl group. So in this case, how many butane gauge interactions are there? Uh, one butane gauge interaction for C1 CH3 group is two, that is one interaction count 0.9. So these two interactions, so overall energy of this molecule is 1.8 kilocalorie per mole. Look at the CH3, CH3, that is C3 and C5, CH3. This C3, C5, CH3 is what? They both are equatorial and the relation you can see, it is 1-3 relation and 1-3 equatorial, equatorial energy is zero. So now show the flip structure of this one. Now after flipping, you can see the changes, axial changes to equatorial while equatorial changes to axial. So this one is going in a downward direction, fourth is going in upper direction. So axial changes to equatorial, but upper bond that is beta bond remains beta only. Number three carbon going in a downward direction, methyl group, Initially, it is equatorial, now it changes to axial. So name of this conformer is EAA. Now you can see here, there are two equatorial bond here, there are two axial bond. So this has to be a more unstable structure. So equilibrium arrow shifted towards this structure, indicating what AEE -E conformer is more stable conformer as compared to this. So as this is more stable conformer, so this is the energy calculation for the trans molecule, that is AE is, is the stable conformer, the energy of this molecule is 1.8 kilocalorie per mole. So overall, what is the conclusion between these two molecules, that is cis molecule and the trans molecule? Cis is the EE isomer, which is stabilized by 1.8 kilocalorie per mole than the trans EAA isomer. So you correct this one, that is the, this has to be what? This has to be E, E and A isomer, you correct it. Because this is the more stable conformer, this one is the unstable conformer. So we had to compare it with the more stable conformer. In cis, the more stable conformer is EEE. -E -E, while in trans, the more stable conformer is EEA -E -E or AEE. -E -E, and that energy is 1.8. So the energy gap between the cis and trans is 1.8 kilocalorie per mole for 135 trimethyl cyclohexane. So this is the three-dimensional picture of this more stable conformer. This is the axial methyl group. So you can see this is the axial methyl group. Now this has, so this one is the equatorial methyl group and the same here, the equatorial methyl group. So you can see here the axial methyl group is going in the top four direction up and this methyl groups are going in the downward direction. So let us discuss the optical activity of these two compounds. So this is more stable conformer of cis and the more stable conformer of trans is AEE. -E. 
So that can be achieved by using a reaction with the palladium that cis changes to trans or trans changes to cis. So in optical activity, you can see there is a so same structure I have written in this. Now you will look at this image of the cis one. So you can see all the methyl groups are equatorial. So these are the equatorial methyl group. So you can see there is a plane of symmetry passing through this. So you can see the plane of symmetry. So like this passing from the number one and number four carbon. So this is number one carbon and this one is number four carbon. So the plane passing through the one and four carbon, it cut into a equal half to half portion. We call it is a presence of plane of symmetry. So there is a presence of plane of symmetry. Once a plane of symmetry is there, so automatically the compound is optically inactive. The prior to that, whenever a compound, whether the compound is optically active or not, you have to ask three questions to the molecule, whether you have a chiral center, the first question is that one. The second question, whether the compound possesses any symmetry element. And the third question that you have to ask to this molecule is whether the resolution possible or not. So as per the first point, whether there is a chirality or not, so you can see there is a chiral center. So there is a plane of symmetry here. Same here, look at. Now this trans molecule, in the trans molecule, you can see now this is the axial bond. So axial methyl group and these two are the equatorial methyl group. So these two are the equatorial methyl groups. Again, the plane passing through one and fourth carbon. So you can see here the plane passing through this that it cuts into the molecule into a two equal half portion. Therefore, we call again here, there is a presence of plane of symmetry. So the conclusion for this, the cis and trans isomer having plane of symmetry, whenever the plane of symmetry is there, the term that we had to use the compound is meso. Meso is optically inactive. So now you can see here the trans and cis molecule, from the different rotations, that is three-dimensional rotation of this molecule, you can easily get the idea that how the molecules looks in a three-dimensional view. So this is a trans molecule. You can see in the trans molecule, this is the actual methyl group. While these two methyl groups are equatorial. So you can view the molecule from different angle. And so that this will be clear to you how you can see there is a plane of symmetry. So you can readily see here, there is a plane of symmetry. So same in case of a cis molecule. In case of a cis molecule, all the methyl groups are equatorial so you can readily see there is a plane of symmetry passing through carbon number one and four so for this you go through this reference books